Okay, this is uh, 13. Um, so this one, see, um, it looks like there's, like you can see a lot of mucin, and then also like a mixoid stroma. Um, it also seems like there's a lot of blood vessels, um, like intermixed with like the mixoid stroma. Yep. So this one you think is good for angiomyxoma. Very good. This is mixoid. It has prominent kind of uh, branching vessels. The cells, it's hypocellular, and the cells usually kind of look kind of like a plump fibroblast. Sometimes they have a bean-shaped nucleus with a little blob of pink cytoplasm, um, uh, similar to the kinds of cells that you see in deeper, like intramuscular myxomas. So this is cutaneous myxoma, also known as superficial angiomyxoma. So to me, those names are synonymous. I regard them as synonymous, at least. Um, the, uh, these are unrelated to another entity, which is known as a deep angiomyxoma, or so-called, air quote, aggressive angiomyxoma, which is in the a large, deep mass in the vulva um, that deeply invades the pelvis. It's not really aggressive, but it is a deep and hard to, sometimes hard to remove, and so it can have persistence slash recurrence. Um, so unrelated, and it looks quite different from this, but people often get concerned. If they see anything mixoid in the vulva, they worry about the aggressive angiomyxoma, particularly because the name makes it sound uh, like a really bad thing. It can be problematic for patients. It can be morbid, but it's not, it's not malignant. Um, okay, so anyway, here it's mixoid. It has the vessels. So the other thing it tends to have is cutaneous myxoma, aka superficial angiomyxoma, often, not always, but often has entrapped adnexal structures with cystic change, either hair follicles and or sweat ducts or sweat glands, and they often get entrapped in the middle of it and says some cystic change. Some people have postulated that these actually may be because maybe these are actually like hair follicle neoplasms that have abundant mixoid stroma, like uh, like a, a mixoid stroma predominant trichodiscoma. I, I know Tim McCalmet has uh, uh, talked about that idea before, which I have seen cases that did have kind of overlap between a hair follicle tumor and uh, myxoma. So I think that's a really fascinating idea. All right. The other thing is it, that there's a clue for this is that about like 25% of cases will have scattered neutrophils, which is a kind of unusual finding. So if you see a mixoid thing and there's scattered neutrophils, that's a good clue that you're probably dealing with a cutaneous myxoma, superficial angiomyxoma. Uh, I would point out if there's an ulcer with neutrophils on the top, then, then that rule kind of goes out the window because of course there'll be neutrophils in the dermis because they're coming up to the ulcer. So, um, and where might this be on the body? Look at all these, these things. Where do you think this is anatomically? Thick, smooth muscle bundles, a bunch of them. Got some apocrine glands. This is the nipple, probably. Could be the vulva or the genitals, but probably not, because usually the smooth muscle bundles are smaller in the genitals. I don't have the history here, but if I were to vote, I would say this is nipple skin. And the reason I bring that up is because cutaneous myxomas can be associated with what disease? Carney's complex. Yeah, Carney's complex, Carney's syndrome, okay? Not to be com confused with Carney's triad, which is totally unrelated. You should only get one eponym if you describe multiple things. One eponym in your lifetime. That's my rule. Uh, and I'm going to, I have the eponym for that to be called Gardner's rule of eponyms, okay? Because Gardner's syndrome's already taken, right? And to my knowledge, I'm not related to the Gardner that described um, uh, familial adenomous polyposis with uh, extra GI manifestations. But anyway. So we're coining it here today. Gardner's rule of only one eponym is that you should only get one thing that your name gets applied to, otherwise it's confusing. All right, that's, that's the way I would do it. So the point is, is that Carney syndrome, right, or Carney complex, which has a variety of different um, uh, internal things and other tumors it's associated with, you can look that up, but uh, they tend to get multiple cutaneous myxomas, and in particular, myxomas, for some reason, of the nipple, the eyelids, and the ear. So if you see, um, most of the time when I encounter a myxoma on the skin, it's just solitary, incidental, and unrelated uh, to Carney's complex. But if a patient has multiple myxomas of the skin or 
they have myxomas of those three anatomic sites, then I'll usually bring up, hey, you may want to work this patient up for um, Carney syndrome and make sure they don't have that, okay? The one other thing is that sometimes it's hard to tell this apart from focal cutaneous mucinosis or focal dermal mucinosis. The things that help me are if I see more prominent branching vessels, if it's larger or goes deeper into the dermis, if there's scattered neutrophils, if there's entrapped nexal structures, all those things would make me favor a myxoma. If it's just a little pocket of loose mucin, a single little tiny papule on the skin that they thought was a basal cell or a nevus clinically, then I would call it focal dermal mucinosis, focal cutaneous mucinosis, same thing. Um, every once in a while on a small shave, I'm not sure, and I say dermal mucin. And it could be focal dermal mucinosis, or it could be the top of a cutaneous myxoma. These are benign, but they can they can recur locally, especially if they're not completely removed. I don't think that you need to do a big excision on them, but just be aware that uh, if you don't get it all out, it can grow back. And if it does grow back, you can then remove it. So, um, And if you saw something like this with pleomorphic cells, and it was maybe a larger lesion in a, the extremity of an older patient, you might worry about a mix of fibrosarcoma, which can look like this from low power, but has ugly pleomorphic cells scattered in it at high power.